Today, I've got nothing but huge stories for you. Starting with Intel getting in big trouble, AMD's new GPU just got cheaper, Nvidia's upcoming super GPU release event and performance, and Ryzen is over 9,000! Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Okay, it's news time, and like I said, Intel looks to be in a whole lot of trouble. As you can see right here, there is a lawsuit claiming that Intel sold billions of AVX-enabled CPUs knowing about the downfall vulnerability. If you've been following this channel, you should be aware of the downfall vulnerability. It's basically something that heavily affected AVX type workloads for quite a bit of Intel CPUs. You can see right here, a group of five Intel CPU buyers have begun a class action suit against the PC chip designer, reveals a court document shared by the register. It says the plaintiffs assert that Intel knowingly sold billions of CPUs after it already knew of the AVX side channel vulnerability that would eventually precipitate downfall. Downfall is this vulnerability right here, and the reason why this may really end up happening is that downfall really affected performance in quite a few ways, or should I say it wasn't downfall itself, it was actually Intel's mitigation of downfall that really hurt performance. It says, back in August, we reported on behind the scenes legal maneuverings as a class action against Intel Brute. At that time, we recalled their contemporary tests on Intel CPU spanning the Skylake to Rocket Lake series processors. It says, architectures showed patching slowed some operations by as much as 50%. But the main issue of the complainants isn't necessarily that it hurts performance or anything like that. The main complaint you can see is that Intel knew of the defect behind downfall since 2018. When we look into it a little bit further, it actually says that a key argument of the plaintiffs is that in the summer of 2018, as Intel was dealing with the fallout of Spectre and Meltdown and promising a hardware fix in future CPU generations, Intel received two separate vulnerability reports from third parties flagging a particular set of instructions on Intel's CPUs called the Advanced Vector Extensions. And apparently Intel has technically acknowledged both of these reports. So it does look like this could be correct, but it's whether or not they effectively deserve money. And on this case, I at least somewhat understand both sides. They're claiming that Intel basically sold a ton of CPUs while they knew that this was an issue. But at the same time, I don't really know what Intel should have done. I mean, it's almost as if they're stating, which I'm not a lawyer or anything. I'm just, it seems like what they're saying is that Intel effectively should have just stopped selling CPUs during that time, or at least should have fixed it. But remember, this is an issue with hardware. Yeah, the software does fix it, but that's why it comes at a massive cost. So this is ultimately something that will likely need to be fixed at the hardware level. And given Intel would have likely been massively deep into production of these or getting production ready, had the design done, and all of that kind of stuff, it would have likely cost them something like hundreds of millions of dollars to just stop production and toss all those chips out. And obviously, tossing all that silicon, things like that, is a bit absurd as well. So maybe they should have told consumers earlier, but at the same time, they could have been working on mitigation. And obviously, they have to verify certain things in the background, and they definitely wouldn't want hackers to know before they have something to fix it. Like I said, I somewhat get both sides here, but there are obvious issues. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And next up for today, I recently covered a story that showed that AMD had started selling their RX 7900 GRE, their brand new GPU, to the DIY market. And not just in China, but in other countries as well, like Europe. Well, it looks like that GPU has gotten quite a bit cheaper. But first, Micro Center just opened their first store in eight years, and they're already opening another. So Charlotte, North Carolina residents, get ready, because Micro Center's coming your way. And if you You've never been to a micro center, don't worry, because they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. Basically, picture an actual place you can go to that has everything you need for your PC build, meaning you can actually look at it before you buy. I'm talking CPUs, GPUs, motherboards galore, custom water cooling parts, and so much more. They're where I bought the first parts for my first ever PC build. They even have a really awesome maker section, so Raspberry Pis, 3D printers, all that good stuff. And today they're offering a first-time customer exclusive. 
Using this coupon, you can get the ever-popular Creality Ender 3 version 2 3D printer for just 99 bucks. Yeah, that's a really great 3D printer for under $100. You can't beat that. So check that out and more by visiting the links in the description below. Now back to the story, like I said, it looks like the 7900 GRE has gotten quite a bit cheaper. As far as what I've seen, it hasn't made it to the US yet, but hopefully it will, especially because, as you can see, this Italian retailer just lowered the price to just 617 euros. Now, that may not sound all that great coming from the US, but the best way to compare the pricing is to other GPUs that are selling in that area. And as you can see, the 7900 GRE is over $200 cheaper than the regular 7900 XT. Now don't forget that the GRE comes with fewer cores than the 7900 XT and it comes with 16 gigabytes of memory versus 20. But $200 is quite a bit and the card looks even better when comparing it to the 7800 XT. As you can see down here, according to video cards, the 7900 GRE is just 15% higher cost compared to the 7800 XT, yet it boasts 33% more cores. Basically, if you're in the area, this could be a really good GPU to buy. And while talking about good GPUs to buy, it looks like we actually have a new event by NVIDIA. As you can see right here, NVIDIA announced their special address at CES 2023. Now the reason this is so important is because, at least from what we're hearing, this is going to be where NVIDIA announces their next generation super cards, specifically their RTX 4000 Super. And according to a new report from WCCF Tech, you can see that they do claim that NVIDIA is going to be announcing the super gpu family they're going to be unveiling them at ces so this definitely looks to be the case not only that but according to wccf tech they have received the final specs for the cards and i actually have those they don't just have specs but they also have performance but i'll get to that in just one second because i will be going over these fairly quickly mostly because as you can see right here the specs are pretty much identical to the specs we saw from the well-known leaker Copite 7 Kimmy just a little while ago. We're talking 10,240 cores for the 4080 Super, 8,448 for the 4070 Ti Super, to which, yes, it very much looks like the 4070 Ti Super is going to be a thing. And finally, there's 7,168 cores for the 4070 Super. Now, when it comes to performance, WCCF Tech also shared this, and I do believe that this is coming from board partners, so it should at least be fairly accurate. As you can see right here, it claims that we're looking at performance between around 3 to 5% faster with the 4080 Super, but they do actually say, yeah, I can see it right here, so they claim 3 to 5% faster than the 4080 non-Super, so the Super would be 3 to 5% faster than the regular 4080, but apparently custom models will deliver close to 10% performance boost. And of course, that isn't a huge difference even if we're looking at that 10%, but if they end up releasing it for the same price or even cheaper than what they're selling the 4080 right now, that could be a serious threat to AMD 7900 XTX. With that said, things do get much better the lower we go. According to this, the 4070 Ti Super is on average 15% faster than the regular 4070 Ti, so a fairly decent boost. And of course, if we're talking the same price or even lower, while these cards are still absurdly expensive, it is nice to effectively get free performance. Then when we move down to the regular 4070 Super, it looks like they're claiming plus 14% faster on average than the 4070 non-Super. So not bad at all, but like I've been saying this entire time, it's really going to boil down to price. And lastly for today, Ryzen is going 9000. Well, at least according to this. The story originally comes from a post on the Chip Hell forum. Yeah, I actually have it up here where they claim that they purchased an R15 from Dell and they actually got 
this. As you can see, it's an advertisement for yet another Alienware desktop, except this time it states that it's Ryzen 9000. Now that may be confusing because we're currently at Ryzen 7000. So you'd think that Zen 5 wouldn't end up being the 8000 series. But because of the leak that I discussed in my last video, it actually makes sense. Remember that according to the leak, AMD is finally releasing new desktop APUs. But instead of the Ryzen 7 7000G series, the leak claims AMD is going straight to Ryzen 8000. So at least in this context, Ryzen 9000 does make sense because AMD may want to separate the APUs from the CPUs a little bit better. Plus, AMD has done this more than once before. I mean, Ryzen 3000 to 5000, then 5000 to 7000. So it definitely wouldn't be unprecedented. Now with that said, while a ton of companies have reported on this, I do want you to take it with a pretty big bucket of salt just because as you can see here i mean this pretty clearly looks like it's just a regular sheet of paper so pretty much anyone could have done this and printed it out and claimed oh well this is what i got from alienware it says ryzen 9000 so this could be fake and it could also just be a typo from dell but I will at least say, based on what we've been hearing, that Ryzen 9000 for their next-gen CPUs does make sense. Not only that, but if this is right, and they're already advertising, even though this may be a mistake and that they didn't mean to send this out, but they did mean to type Ryzen 9000, they just weren't going to send it out yet, that would mean these are coming very soon. And I will say that that's not too much of a surprise given Intel has already released their 14th gen CPUs, even though they are a refresh. Ultimately, I am pretty excited. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's gearing up to release Ryzen 9000 CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to pick up your 3D printer for just 99 bucks down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.